down to it. Let's get into the Drake London. It's not that I'm not a Drake London fan. First of all, I'm not a fan of well, I am fan of some other some some other particular players, right? But I'm really saying I'm not a fan of Drake. I'm not not a fan of Drake London. I just value and examine other wide receivers, all these wide receivers differently. Like I don't get enamored with size. I don't get enamored with the possibility. I get enamored with what they've done, right? Just like the just like the NFL. And we talk about the NFL. What have you done for me lately? When I look at when I look at Drake London's, when I look at just his route and success, screens, flat routes, slants, curls, and digs and posts. Man, he's 80% success rate. He's beating the guy. Deep outs, comebacks, corners, 20%, deep out, 70%, comeback, below 40%. That tells me that he's a big frame guy who doesn't sink his hips. When we talk about not sinking your hips, when you're looking at mobility of corners, if you have some deficiency in an offense where your quarterback, Ritter, is not accurate, is unproven, and your top wide receiver, it must go through you, and he's not great in, he's not great in the route tree, and people can say, oh, he can be taught the, the route tree. Oh, Steve, you, you, you're being too critical of them. These are kids. These are kids in a professional business. Millions and billions of dollars are being made in this profession. So I'm looking at them under a microscope. The same way you're looking at me under a microscope by watching this podcast, hit that subscribe <laughs> button, as well. So when I look at Drake London, I'm, and I'm saying, is he a number one wide receiver? For the Atlanta Falcons? Yes, by happenstance. When Kyle Pitts went down, Drake London shortcomings were exposed. They fed him the ball a lot underneath. But when we talk about success rate and looking at corners, I can't have a number one wide receiver on the fantasy board disappear against top tier corners. Right, we got game one coming, Carolina Panthers against the the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, get AJ Terrell. My, AJ Terrell versus uh, Terrence Marshall, uh, Terrence Marshall Jr. And JC Horn on the other side. JC yep. Horn on the other side. Man, you can't be running a slant. Uh, you can't. You can't win. Have an eighty yard drive running slants and curls the whole time with that pass rush. We're now agent zero, Brian Burns. I, I need to see a little bit more out of you out of that route tree. So I, I love hearing you talk wide receiver, Steve. And I hate to be in the position to, to disagree with Steve Smith on wide receiver. Well, it's fine. It's fine. Um, you can disagree. But I think Drake London is going to have a great year. I, I absolutely okay. do. I think why? that you're Tell us I why. think you so I think you're right in some of his deficiencies. I don't think he's ever going to be maybe a top five overall receiver in this league. I don't know Ooh. if he has the the movement of a Justin Jefferson or a, a Tyree Kill or some of these guys who talk receivers, but I think he can win in what he does well. You're right. Okay. He's a 6'4", big frame receiver. And just watching him in practice this week, you see how they want to get him the ball. They want to throw him those jump balls. They want to use him kind of like how Mike Williams was used with the Chargers. And I think okay. that at his ceiling, he can be that type of player, maybe even a little better. Um, and I think that Drake London last year, 72 catches, 866 yards. To me, this is a guy that's going to easily be a thousand yard receiver. I wouldn't be shocked if he hits a 1200 yard mark because of okay. what you mentioned. There's not a lot of weapons here in the receiving group, but they have enough in the other positions that he's going to get a lot of one on one coverage. And there's not a lot of guys that can cover 6'4", 220 on the outside when you're throwing them a big jump ball. And so, yeah, he might not be able to run that. That that double move and get you to the, the things you want. But if I'm going to be able to throw him a little fade route and get that consistently, I think that's going to be a lot of the play action game we see in Atlanta. 
they're going to run the ball a lot and they're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage with their receivers. And I'm telling you, like I talked to Drake London yesterday. He knows last year he had some mistakes. He said, okay. hey, last year was just decent for me. And I like when a guy's accountable and doesn't just yes. look at the numbers See, and I say. I, I haven't heard that. And I, and I like that. And even hearing you talk is making me go, okay, I'm sitting back. I'm sitting back getting schooled. I just sometimes when I'm looking at receivers, right? every receiver, I, I like to ask the question when I'm doing my notes. And these are my own notes that I'm looking at. What kind of weapon is it? So that's what I'm asking. And you told me contested catches, red zone, yep. uh, uh, high point in a foot, high point in a football. Yep. So my question goes, well, when you put them against a Devin, I think it's Devin or a uh, holiday down mm -hmm. in Miami. Yep. Who's a guy who's as super athletic like him and can jump, jump. Who's going to win? Yeah. You're talking about Javon Holland. Yeah, Javon Holland. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, Javon, yeah, Javon Holland. Holland. I don't know. I like I Javon mean, Holland. Who's going to yeah, yeah. piece it together too? Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Look, Javon I, Holland. Bro, I got so many names in I there. Know. No, trust I get me, them I confused. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, I, I, know. I love. I, I love Javon. I love Javon Holland as a player, but one on one, I think it's going to be. I think he would have a hard time facing Drake London. To be mm -hmm. to be real with you, I, okay. maybe I just have a high view of Drake London and maybe his potential in his role. Like Steve, you you're educating me a lot about uh, about his fluidity and his routes, and I think that's important. I think that he's not going to be a guy that you see play every position. He probably is a true X. He's probably not going to play in the slot a lot. You know, although Arthur Smith loved what he did out of the slot in college, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them try some things there. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't seen a lot of that as a pro, right? But what he does well and what I think he can do well in the future works well with what Atlanta's offense is because they're going to run a lot of two-back sets. They're going to run a lot of two tight end sets. And mm -hmm. so teams are going to be crowding the box. You're going to see a lot of seven and eight in the box because you're going to have to stop Bijan. You're going to have to stop Tyler Algier. This is a team that was a top five rushing offense with Tyler mm -hmm. Algier and Cordell Patterson last year. Now you add Bijan Robinson. Like It wouldn't shock me if they're the number one rushing team mm -hmm. in the league. So and so that means that when they pass the ball, people are going to be surprised. And Drake London is going to be the beneficiary in my, my mind a lot. Good to it. Good to it. Let's get down to it.